That was a mega mix. That was tremendous, David. Well done. All right. TJ is joining us. He looks fantastic. There you go. Get into it. So we have a, we got a lot of ground to cover, but Rico wanted to start by asking you a question, if that's okay. Shoot. So Eastern Michigan. Okay. What happened in that yeah. last game? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the Toledo game? Yeah. We'll I didn't one. disclose yeah. what you sent me. I just said there were lots of expletives. I told you Toledo was a good team, Mike. Okay, your you team didn't blows. Want to to Can we fire Creighton? Can we be done? Okay, good talk. All right. So, listen, let's Seriously. Just... No, no. no. <laughs> Michigan fans, and, and you like the University of Michigan, have you opted out? Are you done for the year watching them? High expectations. You're nowhere near close to that. You're going to have to try to fit, win one game just to be bowl eligible. When you look at all the games that you have, it may be Northwestern. <laughs> Get you to six wins. Um, yeah, opted out. Yeah. Mm, well, you, you, not, they're not, not appointment fully. viewing. They're not appointment viewing. I mean, I'll have them on the TV. You know, if I'm home on a Saturday, then yeah, I'll watch them. Will but you not skip the Ohio intent. State game? No, I'll watch that one. I mean, I, it's going to be a bloodbath, okay. but, you know, that's tradition. Um Opted out completely? No, but watching less intently or passionate? Like, t- absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think whatever happens, you're you're surprised. Even if they were to win this weekend, I don't think I would have some reaction that was like, oh, man, big time, because the season's already kind of is what it is. You know what I mean? So, um, and if they lose, it's like, well, okay, like we know they stink this year anyway. So, I don't watch with the with as much passion, certainly, obviously, as, as you do when your team's undefeated. Uh, competing for you know a playoff spot but opted out completely no I mean I haven't embargoed them and said you know I'm disgusted by this team and I'm not watching at all uh no I'm not at I'm not at that point Creighton hot seat <laughs> why do you still keep going back to that because I I can't stand him I he never because he never you've wins never, you've never met him I, because this he never nice wins guy. I don't want to be friends with him like you I want the Eastern should be so much better than they are but nobody cares let's just I move agree. on Win them back, will you please? Well, doesn't look like it's going to happen. Yeah, uh, again. So, look, let's get to more relevant things, shall we? <clears throat> the Lions. I didn't know you were so passionate about Eagles football. Man. Because I know you care, <laughs> and I know it bothers you by what you text me, and I do feel bad, and I just don't get it. Yeah. I don't understand. You get bummed when you lose to a bad Akron team and then blow a, a big you know, fourth-quarter lead against Toledo, who has been one of the best teams in the MAC. Yeah, yeah it's frustrating. Exactly. Especially when you're a power broker and a donor and a bowl rep. Now, listen. Good point. Let's get to the real deal here. Lions are never losing again. (laughs) Deja vu from Monday. Okay. Uh, I'm being serious with you because the rules don't apply to this team. They just don't. Now, is that your hope or expectation? No, I'm just kind of thinking, you know what? Those are two different things. Well, here's what I comped them to, and you can laugh. There's only one other team in the last 25 years of football that's got a winning margin like they do. CO7 Patriots. Honestly, they're winning games by two touchdowns a game, Rico. Uh, TJ, sorry. <laughs> no, I know. But they're on a heater. No, they're on a heater. So they my are. point is, maybe in real time, it's happening. So I'm done fighting it. Like, should they lose this game Sunday? Yeah, they should. Back-to-back on the road. It's another playoff team. It's Sunday night. It's another, you know, you're going into somebody else's house, and they can't possibly be this hot. You know what? F it. Rules don't apply. Lions by a zillion. And by the way, David, on the picks, uh, you got to change the lines. I told you we're doing alt lines only. Three and a half, make it nine and a half. <laughs> nine and a half plus 235. Why alt, stop there? Alt, fine. Make it a college game. 13 and a half. Go. Bottom line, I'm asking you, do you, but look, you've been a part of great teams. Yeah. You've played in the league. You understand it doesn't work this way. I don't care how good you are. Yeah. But it's happening for them. Are we witnessing something special? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, just it, because what they've what they're what they're doing is sustainable. They've been doing it for a long time. You know what I mean? They've been doing it for thirty games, however long. You know, back to the second half of the twenty twenty two season when they went on a run. You want something fun? Um, last fifty six. Last fifty six games since the midway point of twenty two. Fifty six games. Do you know what they are against the spread? 56, mm-hmm. uh, 40 and 16. 41 and 15. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. not a surprise. The greatest yeah. run in the history of the NFL. That's incredible. <laughs> it's, it's, and a lot of it now, remember, incredible. last year and this year, 
That's as a favorite. Mm -hmm. You're hitting teams with cinder blocks. Yeah, you're smoking for the most part. Yeah, but I, I think that's the thing that gives me um, the hope is that because it's not some fake, you know, oh, they're getting lucky. Every team they're playing is, is has the worst game of the season when you're playing the Lions. Um, it doesn't seem fake at all. It doesn't feel that way. It feels real. You know what I mean? This feels like who they are. They, mm -hmm. They're no longer a team where you look at and say, okay, I think their identity is this. I think they look like this. Like We know what they are. You know what I mean? Yeah, and now, now, now do I expect them to go 16-1? No, I think that's an unfair expectation to say as soon as they lose a game, oh, no, come crashing back. You know I'm what I mean? I don't want to do what that. Costa's but doing. See, Costa does the whole, uh, this, is a, this is matter of fact. I'm busting balls, but I'm actually saying nothing would shock me at this point. That's different than what he's doing. I'm just saying, TJ, th there's certain teams, whether it was the Chiefs a few years ago, 99 Rams, 07 Pats, uh, there was the one year in Green Bay. At, didn't you guys go 14-2 or whatever it was? Yeah, like, we were 15-1, yeah. 15-1, excuse yeah. me. The point is, you just in real time are watching it, and you're going, all right, I'm not fighting this anymore. I'm just going to go with this. This yeah. might actually be who and yeah. what they yeah, are. I'm there. They're a powerhouse. Yeah, you're, no doubt. Or you're, or you're like the, uh, what was it, the 99 or 2000 Vikings right. that only lost one game, end up losing in the championship game. Oh, Anderson, the Morton Anderson yeah. kick. Oh, yeah. Mm. Hate but yes, it. you keep going like this, people will talk about you 20, 30 years from now. Oh, remember the 24 Lions, like you do the 85 Bears, yeah. like you do certain teams. No doubt. And, you know, reality is you're not even at the halfway point yet um, of the season. So can you continue to do it? Yeah, I, I think you can. Do I expect it? To, do I expect Jared Goff to go complete 80% of his passes the sure. rest of the season? Why not 85? Okay. I'm not there. We know there's going to be one game where something's off of with something, you know what I mean. It's just human nature. Well, yeah, it's that, just you know, how the it, season goes. It was called the, the Baltimore game. game, right? But he you didn't know. do anything, and they still won by fifty. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Sixty-two <laughs> yards good passing, point. fifty-two points. Yeah, that's a good point. But so, um, no, I, I think that yeah, that you're, they're absolutely turning the conversation around, and uh, the way that Dan Campbell gets these guys just to like ignore all that. You know what I mean? I think it's incredible. They, they just live in this like tunnel vision. It's us. We're you know it's Friday. This is the only thing that matters. You know we're doing red zone today. Like it's, last week doesn't matter. This week doesn't. You know what I mean? Sunday I doesn't matter. The yeah, most today matters. Like, group in the league. They are no doubt. They're and the they best make coach team in the league. And they're still one of the youngest teams. I think they've got a top eight. You know, uh, youngest roster in the NFL. But a lot of the, these guys have been here since the beginning, and they've been through those hard times. And they're built just tough. You know what I mean? You you come out of that on the other side with which is different characteristics. And uh, they just have this laser focus, man, that I think is is incredibly I, – I admire the hell out of it, I'll tell you, because in, especially nowadays with the amount of distractions that are possible out there, yeah. uh, they do an incredible job. And they're fun to watch. And it's at a point now where you're like – other teams are starting to stress themselves out a little bit. And you, you watch that Tennessee game. You watched last week against Green Bay. I know you won by double digits. Did it feel like you blew them out? Not really, but it felt like – See, Green Bay me, was did. they were they were pressing so hard that they were making the mistakes and Detroit's good enough to to say now hey if you're going to be making all the mistakes we're just going to get the hell out of your way we're just going to let you implode you know what I mean and they've done that a couple times yep. against good teams so that's a sign of a good team when you face other good teams and you watch them have the desperation mode that means they respect the hell out of what you're doing and kind of convinces you and validates that what you're doing is you know you're you're the top dog. That's how I, that's how we look at it. I, I'm sure that's how they look at it internally as well. So I want to go back to something you said, Chris Creighton. <laughs> no, all right. So I, so listen. <laughs> Give me a name. <laughs> Zadarius Zadarius Smith. Talk to me. Obviously, we all wanted help. We wanted a pass rusher. W when you watch the tape, when you what what in your mind as a former lineman, what are the Lions getting in Zadarius Smith, and how is it? How do you think it will alter what they're doing defensively? I think he can fit right into this defense the way that they play. The four down looks, uh, move him around a little bit. He's a great interior rusher as well. I mean, that's the one thing that stands out on the tape. He's not just a, uh, you know, edge, speed edge guy. Just, yeah, he's yeah. not that. He's a complete player. And is he an all pro type guy at this age? I don't think so. But he he still brings a lot of really good stuff to the to the table. And is he your best option right now? Absolutely. Yes. The guys that we've seen at the last couple of weeks, the lack of 
pressure from anybody on the exterior. <laughs> well, you <laughs> built up that guy, Frank Muhammad, and then I'm like, well, well why, I mean, why he did have a good game against Tennessee, but I think I kind of got lost in you the clouds against of their offensive there. line. Um, no, but he is a he he's a stu- he's a stud man. He is a good player. Uh, he and he's a complete player too. He's not a guy like last year. You bring in. You know, uh, Bruce Irving, who's going to give you 12, 15 snaps on third right. downs, and hey, let's go try to get a couple hit. He's going to play 90% of the plays mm-hmm. when he gets caught up. I don't well, know if that's going to be this week, but eventually when he gets caught up, that's going to be the type of player he is. And it's going to help you in the run game, too. They've been hurting in the run game the last well, couple here's weeks why. because they haven't been able to set an edge. I th- and you see, you just nailed it. Everyone focuses on Aiden. And what I said earlier in the week, and maybe you'll make fun of this. I said, guys, this isn't a replacement for Aiden. This actually is more of a replacement for Davenport. No doubt. That yeah. big I think edge setter, run stopper, mm-hmm. and yes, he can rush the passer, but there is no replacing Aiden. There's no, no one on the market since you failed to get us Crosby. There's no one on the market <laughs> that can replace. By the way, hi, hey, Max. Oh, we almost made hey, it in Max, the full segment. Maybe your family will show you this clip. <laughs> How's your life? Hey, Max. Two and seven. Get, get a tattoo of an L. You're just tearing on my Eastern boys today, aren't you? You could have come Lord. home, Max. Tuka, 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 tuka. <laughs> you chose violence. <laughs> Hard to argue. <laughs> Hard to argue, Michael. But you're right. I think that's a fair comparison where Smith is more of a pocket-pushing type yep. edge rusher uh, than a speed, flashy guy. I'm going to beat you with spins and all the stuff right. that we saw Hutch do. He's not that type of player. But it can play a role. And he fits into what this defense wants to do when it comes to collapsing pockets. And he'll be the only guy who can line up inside and out that consistently, if they can single him up, and part of that will be your blitz looks and getting him singled, he can win one-on-one. Yeah, no doubt. And that's why he's got the versatility to move around. If you you notice, hey, they're sliding or they're chipping me with a tight end every play. Okay, good. I'll go move over the center. Let's throw him a five-man front. You you can't double I'll tell you right now, if you watch Houston on tape, and you're a defensive lineman, you're going to have a sports gasm looking at Houston's rough. left yeah. guard. Mm-hmm. It's rough. Who is there? Now, you're a former guard. He just went on IR, too. So I think they're back. They're down to their backup. Okay. That so guy wasn't even good. The only person worse than the stiff they were starting at left guard. And here, here's their left guard water bottle. <laughs> That's what Houston's putting out there this week. <laughs> TJ, as a left guard, you have to cackle. It's, it's, it's slightly atrocious. embarrassing watching some of their pass protections. Yes. Two and words. I don't know if that's much on the offensive line. As it, I'll, I'll get to it. C.J. Stroud is not good when it comes to protections. Okay. He Tell is us a more very a college-esque. I want to hear about sliding this. this way and react to what happens. This is good. I'm here for the slander. Let's do that. Uh, all right. David Feminino. i got to get to your level. You're on a heater so We're far. talking Chris Creighton ejection seat coming up next.